Right, welcome ladies and gents. For those that have sort of, you know, been on the channel for a little while now over the couple of weeks, you guys would know how highly I've spoken about Shogun. I think this is a genuine, genuine 10 out of 10 show. I've never given a 10 out of 10 rating ever. I don't really do ratings, mainly because I just don't agree with it. But I don't think that there is any way this show could be better. I think given the context, given the setting, given the themes, given the actors involved, I don't think there will be a way, I don't think there will be a time that this show will be topped. Genuinely. I don't think there will be another show in Feudal Japan about this story that will be better. I think this is a 10 out of 10 show. And in today's video, we'll be looking at an interview with the the star, Hiroyuki Sanada, who was influential in getting this made, and his discussion about the ending of the show. Because it's a great interview. It's an absolutely brilliant interview. It's with The Hollywood Reporter. I will leave it linked down below, but you know, join me on this discussion of the interview, taking a look at it and recapping some bits and pieces. If you haven't already, I did review the whole season of this, uh, Shogun. I'll leave it linked above. Please do go and check it out. And if you're new here, do hit subscribe, turn the bell notifications on. Um, Hiroyuki Sonata, great actor. Been around for a long time, decades acting as a child initially uh, and this I think is probably one of his best works and I know that's you know saying a lot but I do think it is some of his best work he's been given such a range with this character Toronaga brilliant but anyway let's take a look shall we bum, 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 bum. so this is all spoilers by the way obviously because we'll be talking about the ending um, but yeah Hiroyuki Sanada delves into the finale's deeper message, we need the hero who brings about peace. Now again, he was influential in getting this made. The Japanese producer and star unpacked Lord Toronaga's intentions and the show's long journey to completion. That we were able to get this, uh, make this happen is like a miracle to me. Honestly, how they got this made is shocking in this day and age. I'm, it is amazing that they managed to get this made in such an authentic way. Mainly because everything has to be as diverse as possible. And when we say diversity, it doesn't mean more Japanese people or a Japanese story. It means less white people, more black people. That is genuinely what diversity means in modern day context. It's very lazy. This is, this is a story. It's very diverse. When have we had feudal Japan on our screens? Very rarely. This is a very diverse story just from that context. But anyway... Get straight into the actual conversation about it because they did, uh, yeah, really, really good. Well, this, uh, by the way, is, is a great quote. Western and Japanese cast and crew working together across cultures to achieve the same goal. To tell this great old story in an authentic way. That we were able to make this happen is like a miracle to me. Yeah, brilliant. Because they even went so far as to do the sort of authentic Japanese dialect of the time. If you were to speak that, that sort of dialect now... It would seem odd, apparently. That's what's been reliably uh, advised to me. But anyway, they basically say this. Or he's asked this. As the curtain comes down on Shogun, we're given a glimpse of Lord Toronaga's vision of the future. It appears all but certain that he has outfoxed everyone and won the grand game. But it has cost him his eldest son, his oldest friend, and his loyal translator and confident Lord Maliko. How do you view the ending for him? And again, long, long interview. He gives such great wordy replies. I think it's kind of a happy ending. There are some sad notes. But the ending reveals Toronaga's dream. What he's been wanting this whole time. And what he will create for the future of Japan. If people know the history, they already know what Toronaga creates. And that was the most important thing for me about the story. Toronaga ended the Warring States period and created a peaceful era in Japan that lasted for about 260 years until the country opened to the world. That's Toronaga's vision. That's what he's been struggling for, and that's what his never-give-up mindset has achieved. This, this, is, this is true, this is history. Different names, but history. All, all of this was history. Even after he went to the very bottom of his life, around episode 7 and 8, he never gave up. He also had a lot of good luck, and it's allowed him to change the course of history. Creating this period of peace will be the greatest thing he's ever done. 
That's why the model of Toronaga, uh, Toronaga Le Leyasu, is such a hero in Japan. Since I was a kid, I've been reading novels about him, watching movies and TV series about him. I even played Leyasu once before. Uh, this is in the 1989 Japanese historical drama Oda Nobunaga. The reason I took the role this time is because I believe we need this kind of hero right now. We need the hero who brings about peace. That's a good message for the world, especially now when human beings around the world are fighting each other again. Shogun shows how hard peace can be to achieve. Brilliant. I, Hiroyuki Sanada is such a great chap, seriously. He needs to be in more things, more Western things. He deserves such a claim, and I truly do mean that. Uh, and then he's asked, in in that wonderful final scene between you and to Tada Nobu Asano as Yobishij, Yo I'm butchering these words, the question arises of whether it was Toronaga's goal all along to achieve total power and become Shogun, or if he was forced by circumstance to pursue that role. What's your take? Well, we were very careful never to say clearly if he always wanted it or not. As soon as around episode 4, he says he's not interested in becoming Shogun, but he says many times for strategic reasons, and his real intention is sometimes mysterious. If you ask me, I think that statement is true in this version of the story. Toronaga didn't specifically seek that position, but finally, he needs the title of Shogun to make his dream of peace come true. It's almost like, you know, opportunistic fate. You know, he has a goal in mind and becomes opportunistic surrounding it, but it's not his ultimate aim. You know, it's, it's sort of... It's uh, a means a means to an end. I felt myself relating to this because it kind of overlapped with my position on this production. You know, on all of the movies and TV shows I worked on before, I never wanted or asked for the title of producer. But on this project, I started to feel the limit of what I can do and do behind the scenes as an actor. You know, sometimes I had a strong view on how we should handle something but I would have some hesitation to say it and I wouldn't want to hurt other actors or crew members' pride. Finally, though, they asked me to be a full producer this time. Right away, I felt a big difference between having this title and not having it. I could share my views right away. Everyone would listen and the production would move forward. Having this title allowed me to help make a, bunch, uh, help make a much better show. So maybe it was the same for Toronaga. He didn't really want it, but at some point he realised the only way to create a peaceful era was to become Shogun himself. Again, a means to an end. Makes a lot of sense. After this exceedingly positive and successful experience, do you plan to continue as a producer on the future projects you're involved in? And he goes on to say some really nice stuff. You know, yeah, I would love to. Being able to shape uh, the creation from zero was so much fun. But you know, there's lots of stories, lots of ways to tell stories involving Japan. If it's more modern or futuristic, it may not be necessary to be this authentic. I was in Bullet Train and John Wick, and I didn't say too much, because those projects are set in their own worlds. It's not the real Tokyo or the real Osaka. But for this series, where we were doing historical Japan, we needed to make it authentic. If I'm involved in a project like this again, I'm probably going to want to be a producer, and I'm going to push very hard again to get it right. But if it's not a story that's supposed to be carrying our culture... I'm happy to just enjoy being an actor on set. So it's going to be case by case. What a bloody legend. Genuinely. You mentioned how Leasu is a figure of such supreme historical grandeur in Japan. As you're inhabiting Toronaga across this whole season of Shogun, what was important to you in how you shaped your portrayal of him? I tried to forget the model and many great actors who played Leasu before. You know... Toshiro, I'm going to butcher these words, but blah, 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 blah. Loads of people have played the actors. He says, so at the beginning, I thought, okay, I have to forget everything. All of this great work done by my ancestors. So my Leasu or Toronaga, he's a great strategist and he's powerful, but he's also a human being. Sometimes he shows weakness and he's a family man. I suppose humanity was the most important thing for me. He's not just mysterious and powerful. Sometimes he's a weak old man. He's complicated 
and like all human beings, he has many different faces. I didn't want him to be the stereotypical strong samurai. Brilliant stuff. And they actually say, this is interesting, apparently some of the co-stars had mentioned how Shogun was shot chronologically, and how that benefited them in deepening their connection with their characters as the show progressed. That's quite interesting, normally they don't do that. It's very rare for shows to do that, actually. Well, not necessarily shows specifically, but, well, yeah, shows, movies, whatever. Like Shows tend to do it like that, um, actually, in fairness. But I will say movies, they don't. They just do whatever they can at the time. Um, they did such a good job on this. There's not really much else to say, uh, in fairness. Like it's, it's, a, it's a great interview. Like I said, I will leave it linked down below. Um, but they did, they did such a great job on this. And there's not much else, really. I just wanted to sort of clarify his ending his thoughts on the sort of thematic elements of the ending and what that meant and basically his explanation of the ending what do you guys think did you enjoy the show let me know down below if you haven't watched it you must why would you have watched the ending video if you haven't watched it but yeah anyway leave your thoughts down below cheers guys take care bye bye now <laughs>